Today, Disney California Adventure does a great job at celebrating diverse cultural holidays from around the world, this time every year. In the early, confused years of DCA's history though, seasonal holiday offerings were a completely different beast, containing some truly bizarre holiday decorations, downright strange costumes for Santa, and even a show so poorly received and impossible to see, it only lasted for a single season. So today, let's explore DCA's very first holiday season from 20 years ago. For review time, I'm Luke, and this is Disney California Adventure's peculiar first holiday season. It wouldn't be early DCA if their holiday celebrations weren't a bizarre mix of gaudy and outright ridiculous. All around the park, decorations were strung that at least tried to stay thematically consistent with the land they called home. In Bountiful Valley Farm, there were these utterly terrifying holiday scarecrows, Pacific Wharf featured corn husk garlands, and Hollywood Pictures' backlot celebrated with a giant Christmas hat on the water tower and a nice, traditional-looking Christmas tree slapped onto the concrete of the backlot, which may be the epitome of early DCA haphazardness. Over at Disneyland Park, you could meet the traditional red and white costume Santa. But that wasn't hip enough for DCA. Where you could meet some weird type of outdoorsy Californian Santa who seemed to just wander around the park. The main draw for the first holiday season at Disney's California Adventure was the brand new nighttime show. One of the biggest problems DCA encountered in its early years was getting people to stay in the park for more than a few hours. Disney's first attempts in the summer of 2001 would see them bring the then almost 30-year-old Main Street Electrical Parade to the park, renaming it Disney's Electrical Parade. But in the lead up to their big first Christmas season, Disney realized they needed something brand new to offer instead, something the park had been lacking since opening, nighttime spectacular. Disney parks and nighttime fireworks spectaculars go hand in hand. For many people, it's the perfect end to their day. And for Disney, it's a great way to get people to stay in the parks for longer, buying more food and more merchandise. Since its opening seven months earlier on February 8, 2001, DCA had lacked that classic Disney end to the day. Disneyland just across the Esplanade featured a fully packed Christmas program with parades, fireworks, and entertainment. Disney's California Adventure needed to implement something to keep guests in the park rather than hopping over once nighttime hit. Steve Davison, the Imagineer behind shows such as Wishes, Paint the Night, and countless other spectacles, was brought on board to create a holiday nighttime spectacular for this new park. Steve and his colleagues at Imagineering began to look at concepts that had worked around the world in other non-castle parks, and ultimately focused in on the incredible holiday tag for Illuminations at Epcot. The DCA show design was modelled after Illuminations using fountains and pyrotechnics attached to barges that would be brought out to Paradise Pier Lagoon in the afternoon. Replacing the Illuminations rotating globe was a giant fiber optic Christmas tree that would magically grow from the water. Partnered with projections, pyro and California screaming and the sun wheel getting in on the act as well with new synchronized lighting. The show would ultimately be called Luminaria. A Luminaria is a small paper lantern, which is a Hispanic holiday tradition that is set out on a path said to guide the spirit of Jesus Christ to their homes. According to Disney, their show had no connection to this holiday tradition, with the official description of the show saying that it was a spectacular celebration of dazzling lights, low-level pyrotechnics, and favorite holiday music performed on the waters of Paradise Pier Lagoon. The main gimmick of the show was that it was partially interactive. This show would debut 10 years before the magic, the memories, and you would allow guests to get their park photos displayed on Cinderella Castle or It's a Small World as part of a nighttime spectacular. Luminaria, on the other hand, 
would allow guests of all ages to hand draw their own holiday greeting card that would be displayed on giant screens throughout the show. Throughout the day, across from the Golden Dreams Rotunda, you could find the Luminaria Holiday Art Card Center, where your craft talents would be put to the test, creating these holiday cards that would later be selected and then scanned by cast members into a computer system that would digitize them into a format usable in the show. The 17-minute spectacular would be hosted by the voice of Luminaria, who offered a message of peace for the holidays to start the show. The music throughout would be a mix of the original track created for the show and a large number of favorite Christmas carols, including White Christmas, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and many more. The show would feature those previously mentioned pyrotechnics, projection screens, and Christmas tree, which culminated together into a decent holiday spectacular, even though it didn't quite have the emotion of the Illumination's holiday tag it took inspiration from. The show would open on November 9th, 2001 to decent reviews, apart from one rather large issue. Because the spectacular only utilized low-level fireworks throughout, the show's main viewing area would get covered in smoke, meaning you were watching the show through a thick, hard-to-breathe-in smoke cloud. Also, the fact that the show meant a number of Paradise Pier attractions had to close early wasn't a great look for a park that had way too few attractions to begin with. The show would run as planned until the 6th of January 2002, where it was never seen again, only lasting that single season. Ultimately, the fireworks lessons learnt in this show would be utilized 10 years later when designing World of Color for the same lagoon, with a big benefit of that show being how easily the infrastructure could be reused for holiday versions. 2001 wouldn't be Disney's only attempt at creating a unique Christmas offering for DCA. From 2003 to 2007, Disney's California Adventure would offer Santa's Beach Blast, where you could see Santa taking a well-deserved holiday to California, though you think he could at least wait until after the silly season to take his break. At Santa's Surf Shack, you could meet the big man himself in his vacation best, wearing a colorful Aloha shirt, surf shorts, and of course that same iconic hat. Santa wasn't just sitting in a big comfy chair either, he was up surfing with the guests. Seen throughout the event were also the Wave Riders, a band playing classic Beach Boys music, and the Grove 66 a cappella group. Overall though, Santa's Beach Blast was arguably a downgrade from what was offered the first year, as it was mostly just a doled up meet and greet opportunity. If you visit Disney California Adventure for the holidays at the Disneyland Resort today, you'll be greeted by the Disney Festival of Holidays, celebrating a diverse collection of holidays including Christmas, Navidad, Hanukkah, Diwali, Kwanzaa, and Three Kings Day. The event is packed with unique entertainment, food, and more, and truly has become a must-do event if you're at the Disneyland Resort around the holiday season. Luminaria and the initial years of Disney California Adventure have gone down as merely a footnote in the roller coaster ride that is the history of that park. But you can't fault Disney for at least trying something unique 20 years ago. But over to you. Do you love visiting Disney parks during the holiday season for all that extra magic? Let us know down below. And a huge, big thanks for supporting Review Time all throughout 2021. We can't wait to see you back here in 2022. For the home of all things theme parks, I'm Luke for Review Time. Thanks for watching.